Everyone, thank you for your patience here in the press area. Nelly, welcome to the Chevron Championship. Great finish here last year, I remember. Um, I'll open it up to questions right away so we can get you moving. Go ahead, Steve. Nellie, back in 1978 when Nancy Lopez won five in a row, she was on the front page of uh, the cover of Sports Illustrated in the front page of the New York Times. We haven't had that kind of breakout coverage since then. Mm -hmm. Are you, you think we can get there, and are you the person to get us there? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I mean, I think that it just depends on the opportunities that are brought to you. Um, you know, if you're playing good golf and you're – competing well and people see how much love you have for the game or how much that, um, you know, how much work you put in day in and day out. I think that if everything comes with results, if you don't have results, then you're not going to get opportunities. So everything at the end of the day is about results. Do you, do you feel as though you have an extra obligation or anything to try to lift the women's game outside of our little bubble and into the mainstream? Listen, I feel like for me, the way that I promote the game is just the way I am. I am very true to myself. I'm never going to do something I'm not really comfortable with. Obviously, I love seeing all the kids, and I love promoting the game. I mean, there's nothing more that I enjoy more, but I'm always just going to stay true to myself, and um, hopefully that way I do promote the game. Nellie, winning's obviously a lot of fun, and you've been doing a lot of that recently. But you look like you're just having so much more fun on the golf course. What's been that key to just kind of letting yourself, you know, letting yourself go, letting yourself play loose, and, and just have fun out there? Um, honestly, having a really great team around me, having really great people, that really helps. Um, I've always, I've always said that staying in my own little bubble really, really helps me. Um, not getting too distracted or lost in something that, you know isn't really what I want to be lost in. I mean, there's always temptations when it comes to a lot. Um, so I have a really great team around me that keeps me really grounded, and they know me so well that I can say anything to them. And even through hard situations, they know what to tell me to kind of um, make me bounce back. We saw you after the seven-week break. Obviously, that did wonders uh, for you. But even having a few days off ahead of this week and everything that you've got going this week, how much does that help you kind of mentally reset and refresh as you look to go for five in a row? Yeah, I think spending time with family, spending time with Jess, haven't seen her in a really long time, and then getting to spend time with Grayson was so nice, um, getting to recharge the batteries. Obviously, you know, when it's just a week off, you feel like, You've just done your laundry and you're repacking it again, so it flies by really fast with like trying to get some rest, practicing and working out. Um, but you know, having um, my sister come in for those few days really, really helped. Nelly, two consecutive weeks of major golf in the round, and obviously Scotty Scheffler came in with so much expectation on his shoulders and has been not quite as dominant as you, but of that of that ilk. I just wonder, do you draw inspiration for what he did at Augusta last week? Does that kind of help you in your quest to kind of keep this going? Yeah, I mean, gosh, I don't think anyone can ever say anything bad about Scotty. I love his morals. I love the, his attitude out there. I just love the way he goes about his business. Um, there's, he inspires so many around him, including myself. Um, so, yeah, I mean, obviously, as he even said, he, he wants to win every tournament he tees it up in, and I, that's every girl that's out here competing, too. And I think that you just have to go about your business. You can get lost in the, um, the articles. You can get lost in the expectations. But I think if you just stick to your true self, um, I feel like you can live in your own little bubble and enjoy it a lot more. Are you aware that expectation could be a burden or do you just treat it as a, an, an inspiration? No, an inspiration. I mean, I'm hopefully inspiring the next generation and hopefully, um, you know, it promotes the game and um, hopefully we continue to climb up. And just a, a, a final one from me. Golf is, is one of those, but like your dad's sport, you can go on runs of winning tournaments yeah. back to back to back. In golf, it's so rare. Mm -hmm. uh, how aware of that dynamic are you and, and and therefore how aware are you of what you're achieving right now? 
Yeah, I mean, in 2021, I went on a run, and then in 2022 and 2023, golf really humbled me. So um, I think that it it's their sports. There's ups and downs. I mean, every athlete goes through the roller coaster, but that's what makes this sport so great. You mature, you grow so much and you learn more about yourself. So you never take these weeks for granted. You always, you know, um, try to appreciate and become very grateful for them. Um, and it makes just all the hard work so worth it. But, um, I think I've learned so much about myself even through the losses. Hey, Nellie, how are you? Hi. Good. Just checking in regarding the off week uh, on social media. You jokingly referred to your skin complexion <laughs> as Casper the Ghost. <laughs> so I got to ask, it looks like you got some good beach time in, but uh, how was your, your score tanning wise in the off week? I burnt myself pretty good. It's very easy to burn my skin when I never show it. I always have sleeves on, and uh, but it was nice. I was out there with my best friend, Clara, and my sister and Grayson. So it was, it was a nice week. And um, yeah, I tried to live a, the Florida life for a few days, beach and chilling. I don't blame it. Good luck this week. Thanks. Hey, Nelly. Uh, they restored this golf course uh, back to its uh, somewhat back to its original 1999 design mm -hmm. this year. Has your game plan changed at all since your second place finish last year? So I've only seen the front nine, and I know that they changed two tee boxes. There is definitely um, different grass on the greens, um, and th it's a lot bouncier. So having to judge that is definitely going to be different compared to last year. I think last year it played really soft because the weather wasn't great. There was a lot of rain. So definitely a little bit of an adjustment from last year to this year just because you can't play as aggressive it being so firm and bouncy on the greens. But overall, I've just seen the front nine once, so I can't really say if my game plan is going to change. But just from what I saw yesterday, definitely can't be as aggressive as last year. And your overall impressions of the Woodlands so far? I love it. Um, it kind of, obviously, it's Bermuda. reminds me a bit of home. I love playing on Bermuda. I love the humidity of the weather. So um, it's a fun track. Um, and I think, you know, if... I don't know what the weather is supposed to be like, but if it gets windy out here, it's going to be really tough. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, Nelly. Hi. I remember in your 2021 run, you talked about your dad having a boot camp for you. Yeah. Kind of set, hit the reset button. What advice has he given you during this unique stretch in your career? Um, honestly, just to enjoy every second of it. Um, you know, the careers go by really fast and there's so many highs and lows in a career and um, to just be grateful about it all and very humble. Did you find yourself reflecting during your time on the beach about <laughs> what had transpired? Yeah, a little. I, I mean, honestly, when I go home, I'm just so excited to see my uh, family that like my attention is on them 100% that just spending time with them and c disconnecting away from what just happened also helps me a lot. Thank you. Thanks. Nelly, it would be natural to expend a ton of energy to have gone through these four events, these four yeah. wins. How, where is your energy level at coming into this week after getting back to your own bed? Yeah, uh, gosh, last week I was so tired. I don't think I've ever been that tired. I woke up and I was ready to go back to bed, but I couldn't. It's almost like to the point where you're so tired, you almost can't sleep. Like you're just overly tired, um, but made sure to prioritize my rest. Um, my parents are always on top of me to, you know, not overdo it. Or I always want to, I always want to practice more. I want to do more um, to be better. So uh, made sure to prioritize my rest, uh, to re prioritize my rest, and uh, making sure to go to sleep early and sleeping a lot too, because that's uh, the number one thing for a recovery. But overall, this week I feel really good. You've mentioned staying grounded by being around your team, them keeping you in the present moment, but this is possibly a once in a lifetime opportunity. This mm -hmm. chance rarely comes by on the LPGA. What is that challenge like to put that to the side and really try your best not to think about it? Yeah, I, I don't know. I think obviously I'm so grateful and happy to be in this position that I could pull off four wins in a row. But um, I feel like in sports, you're always kind of looking ahead. You're always looking what's next instead of like um, reminiscing on what has happened. So 
Um, again, I'm so grateful for my team that we all kind of like live in our own little bubble that we j honestly take it a shot at a time. And um, yeah, that's what I'm going to be thinking about because I think added pressure um, isn't always a good thing. Do you remember at what point in time in your career that focus on the present really clicked into place for you? Yeah, um, I would say um, <laughs> I was actually talking before my first ever LPGA win, I was talking with Hollis Stacy on the putting green at concession. And we were, I was out there putting, doing a drill, and she, she always comes up to me whenever she sees me out there. And she was just, uh, I was just talking to her about, like, obviously that I haven't won out on the LPGA tour. And she just said, when the time is right. So I just, I put that in my yardage book that week um, that I won in uh, Taiwan at Swinging Skirts. And I just said, when the time is right, it'll happen. And that made me very present. And that made me think of more of golf as a shot at a time, not to get too ahead of myself. And when the time is right, it'll happen because I've put in all the work. Is that saying still in your yardage book to this day? There's a couple things in my yardage book, but uh, I do remind myself of that a lot, yep. All right, we're, as we wrap up a little bit, let's um, do one question from each of these few standing here. And then I have two on the Zoom, so just okay. five more. Yeah. Hi, Nellie. It's Shelly Snuckles from KPVU TV. And I wanted to know, coming from your first major win, whether that being in like middle school or high school, mm -hmm. or even the harder halls individual, um, how has your gameplay improved the most, whether that be physical, mental? I think overall just everything kind of has to improve when it comes to um, my body. I mean, obviously, over the past couple of years, I've had issues with injuries. So making sure that my body is good with all the travel and then mentally, I think the most I've learned myself is uh, about myself is when I play in under pressure, uh, under pressure situations. So being in contention and how to handle those situations, because even though a lot of people may not seem that I say that I show it, I definitely feel all the emotions internally. So knowing how to process those emotions and not have it come out negatively, um, I've learned a lot about myself through those situations. Thank you. Thanks. First, just a follow up to Ken's question. Can you tell us what some of those sayings are that are in your yard book? <laughs> Well, <laughs> no, <laughs> they're private. <laughs> there were ones that Jamie Mulligan actually had me put in there. So um, I, I actually, um, the first week I had it was in Bradenton, the yardage book. So I look at, I look at it, th those things. Uh, there's four in there. And I look at those things uh, almost every hole. What does history and your place in, in it, what does that mean to you in this game? Um, I feel like that's a question that I haven't really thought about too much. I'm so like in the present that like I don't let myself think about that too much because I feel like that just comes with a little bit more added pressure. Um, obviously like there's nothing better to me than seeing all the little kids come out and saying that, you know, I inspire them to pick up a golf club or I, I'm their favorite golfer. There's no better feeling than that. And hopefully I do get to inspire the next generation with the love that I have for the game and hopefully they have it too. But when it comes to the history, I feel like I'm so caught up in being present that I haven't thought about that too much. Thanks. All right, last question from the room. Hi, just along the same lines of reminiscing a little bit, having played on the Epson tour back in 2016, how impressed are you with the girls out there now and how ready they are to come out here and compete? Yeah, I'm so grateful for my time on the Epson tour. Obviously, back in the day with Symmetra, um, I think it shaped me to be the player I am today. Um, I would recommend it to everyone. Um, there's just, it's, it was a great experience for me. I just learned, I was in between going to college for a year or playing out on the Epson tour for a year, and I'm so glad I took that route because I learned what it was like to play week in, week out, not seeing my coach after 
um, you know, one tournament where, honestly, I didn't really play that much junior golf. I played like seven tournaments max a year, and then I would go and see my coach right after. So getting to know what life on tour is like and playing week in and week out um, in the U.S. domestically, I think really, really helped me to be the player I am today. And I know the year that I was out there, I was out there with Ali, I was out there with Madeline. Like, the scores... Um, doubled under par. I mean, the competition that year was so, so good. And I know every year the competition out there is getting better and better. And um, it's great to see sponsors support the Epson tour and raising the, uh, the prize money because those girls are good. And, you know, it's a great way to pave their way into the LPGA. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Um, last couple of questions just here on the Zoom. Jean, if you'll go ahead and ask your question. Sure. Hi, Nelly. Um, we're, we're about a week removed from the Women's College of Basketball and National Championship game where about 20 million people tuned in. Um, with the run you're on and the attention it's getting and how so many great young players on the LPGA Tour, many American, many in their 20s, do you think your sport is poised to kind of follow a similar trajectory in the near future? I mean, hopefully. I feel like we just need a stage, right? Um, we need to be put on TV uh, I feel like, you know, when it's tape delay or anything like that, that just hurts our game. So I feel like women's sports just need a stage. And if we have a stage, then we can show up and we can perform and we can show people what we're all about. Thank awesome. Thanks, Gene. Mark, can you go ahead? Yeah, now we kind of piggyback on that question. Your name came up in a press conference with uh, Fred Ridley, the Augusta chairman last week in relation to, to Caitlin Clark and what she did to bring popularity to women's college basketball the last couple of years. Do you f personally feel any sort of duty or burden to, to help the tour get more into the spotlight? No, never any burden when it comes to this. I just hope I show people that, you know, um, how much I enjoy being out here week in and week out competing against all the girls, practicing, and hopefully, you know, that drives more attention to us. Um, obviously, you know, with the run I've been on, maybe there are more eyes on me, but um, I always am very grateful for it because I know how fast something can be taken away from you. So, um, you know, I hope that people see who I am, my true self, and that inspires them too. Thank you. Adam, last question. Thanks, Nellie. Nelly, congrats on the run uh, to this point. I'm just curious if anyone else on the LPGA Tour or any of the, any of the players have asked you, what have you been doing different or what are maybe some of your keys to success? Has anyone asked you about your success or maybe how they could imitate what you're doing out there? No, no one. I, I have gotten a couple of funny comments saying that I should go home. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, no one's really asked me. I feel like, um, you know. Is that surprising? Uh, th that I should go home or that no. what I'm doing? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, no one's, that no one's asked you what, 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 I'm what doing? you've been doing well. Nah, yeah. You know, I think that the girls out here, um, we've all learned that we have to do what's best for ourselves. And it's, um, it's very easy to get caught up in what everyone else is doing. And I feel like if you do get caught up in what everyone else is doing, you're making yourself a little bit more complicated. You, maybe you're putting too many tools in the toolbox. Um, so I feel like a lot of girls just kind of stick to what they're doing out here and vibe with it. Awesome, thanks. Thanks. Thank you so much, Nelly. Thank you. Please stick around, everybody. We'll have um, 